I'm doing a quick five likes and five dislikes of this here RDX after driving it uh, for a few months now. Don't forget to like, view, and subscribe to the channel for future content. Right off the bat, even from the day that I bought it, is the exterior and interior styling. So starting right up at the front, the grill is gorgeous. The accents around the bottom grills, as well as the jewel eye LED headlights. You can't beat those. Now this model doesn't come with the fog lights. I can live with it. The jewel eye headlights do a pretty good job lighting the road. All the lines on this thing are absolutely gorgeous. They literally flow from front to back. The big wheels are amazing. I'm surprised that a base model comes with 19 inch wheels standard. The 19 inch wheels adorn all of the models so you're not really losing out on much with the base model. The interior styling is fantastic. Beautiful aluminum accents everywhere and just the cut of it, everything looks and feels really upscale. Number two, the front seats are absolutely amazing. They're contoured nicely. You kind of sink right in, but not too far in. I haven't really futz with them since I got it just because they feel so nice to sit in. The height is just right. The length on the bottom cushion is excellent. And the tall section of the seat is just right. I remember in an IS once, I felt like the seats were just too small and I never really found a really comfortable spot. Both front seats are power adjustable. They don't take anything away from the passenger. Number three, the storage space. There's storage space everywhere. You got pockets on the doors. You got a nice big storage area under the shifter, but I'm not a clutter freak. I like to keep my interiors fairly clean, but if you need to dump stuff in the car, you got plenty of storage space in here. Number four, the power tailgate. Can't imagine that a base model of anything comes with a power tailgate. This one does. Love it. Look at that thing go up and look at that thing go down. It is just fantastic. Now it doesn't have the kick tailgate. You need to hop into the advanced model to get that, but the power tailgate is enough. And number five, the fabulous handling. The handling of this thing is just fantastic. It really feels like you're in something close to German made. This very nimble ability in turning cornering uh, when you're coming off exits. It doesn't feel like the weight of the car is overpowered. Now let's get to the bad. I got five bad things. I had to actually really think hard to get them. I was spending time trying to figure out what some of the bad things were. I really dislike the shifter. I'm more than six months into driving this car. I still find myself having to look at the shifter port here you know, with all the buttons to shift to when I want to shift into different gears. I thought by now I'd be totally used to it, but I guess the issue here is, is that you actually have to move your elbow to feel around till you get to the electronic shifting buttons. Maybe they just move it down a couple of inches and get rid of the infotainment true touchpad. That would be a great idea, wouldn't it? Number two on the dislikes list is the bumpy ride. This is a premium SUV. Yes, there are nice chunky tires on here. You still feel this bumpiness to it, so you very much know you're in an SUV. So there's really no getting away from the fact that you are in an SUV despite this being a luxury vehicle. Number three, the ambient lighting. Granted, it's the base model and lighting may not have been part of this package. It's not available in the RDX at any level and what I mean by that is the awesome lighting inside of the TLX and all the colors that are available for that lighting are just not available at any trim level for this RDX. Competitors like Audi, Mercedes, and yes, even BMW are doing the lighting a lot nicer in these cars. Number four, and I know this is gonna be remedied in the 2022, is blind spot monitoring. Now blind spot monitoring, I would imagine that all the safety features you figure would be included in something with a price tag for this truck. There are cars in lower price brackets that just throw all of this stuff in. Blind spot monitoring, 
rear cross traffic alert. These are things that you figure it should be standard. And it's one of those things that every so often I catch myself with a major blind spot and honking horns aside me and I'm just like, oh, you know, it's like you, you can't ever forget that, man, I got the base model and I didn't get any of those safety features. So that kind of burns me in the giblets a little bit. Number five, why have a 10.2 inch screen and then give you a multi-function to show you a big old clock. Let me use that screen for more important things like seeing a map or just admiring the 10.2 inch screen. Though I like the clarity, the darkness and the richness of the screen, they could have executed a little bit better like some of their competitors. That rounds off my five likes and dislikes for the 2021 RDX. The ownership experience for this car has been pretty decent. Those dislikes, I had to dig for them. You know, I could have said things like the fuel economy, but we all know that, you know, it's just because you got a big old heavy truck on a four cylinder engine when this should be sitting on a six, but you know, when they're going for fuel economy figures, that's what you're gonna get. So we just have to enjoy what we get with it. This is Nelson from Flat Six Media and giving you a quick update on long-term usage of this 2021 RDX. Thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you in the mentions. Take care. See you soon.